Hey, 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 this is Courtney Rollins with the Aqua Team, and today I wanted to go over the Aqua Team script. Now, this script is something that I've been tweaking and has really come from my experience working with John Martinez's training, of course, the TTP man himself, Brent Daniels, and uh, just in time talking to hundreds and thousands of sellers. Something that will continue to tweak, um, but I want to share with you so that you could move and you can grow and that you could uh, uh, take it on and make it your own. So let's get started, all right? So there's essentially seven parts or seven aspects of the script that, um, that are very essential. Um, one is the intro and the rapport. Uh, it's something that you're gonna actually do throughout the entire uh, time that you're talking to the seller and that's building rapport. Um, setting the expectations and then seeking pain <laughs> And then seeking the, or highlighting the impact of the pain. And after that, it's responding to the pain with the value that we provide. And also very important is finding and addressing any deal breakers that may get in the way of uh, making this deal if you get this far uh, along with that lead or the seller. And then finally, of course, that's closing the deal. So there are a few notes on the script. Um, when you're talking to someone, the most important thing is to be likable. This conversation that you're having with the lead or the seller is really not about the house. It's about being likable, it's about being agreeable, and it's about connecting with warm, uh, uh, warm, active listening skills that allow the seller to see, oh, this person hears me, this person understands me, and this person has value that's going to respond to my needs and to my pain. Also, building rapport isn't just about Oh, you like cars, I like cars. Oh, you like blue, I like blue, which is quite often um, uh, what's shared out there when we talk about building rapport. But building rapport is actually demonstrating confidence, certainty, competency, and likability. And perhaps I should add in there humility as well. So you don't want to be just some arrogant, just out there person, but you are the expert. 99% of the people that you talk to, if you're this far along, you know more about real estate than they do already. So there's no reason, um, even though you are naturally gonna feel uh, awkward at times, just, just know that you are, you are the expert there. And so you can, you can demonstrate that through your tonality, through your, your pace, and through the way you show up uh, with uh, the lead. Have a serving mentality. We're not there to convince anyone to sell us their, their home. We're here to see if we actually are the tool or the piece of the puzzle that they need to uh, complete this part of their journey. And I've said it before, but tonality and pace are extremely, extremely important. There are so many uh, aspects of uh, psychology that go into how we talk to someone, how we mirror and match the way that they speak uh, to allow us to feel that connection. People like to feel connected to people that they think that they have a connection to. And one way to be able to do that is matching the tone of your, uh, of your lead. Of course, you're doing this in a authentic way. Memorize the script. I know it may seem awkward and odd. We're asking you to have a very uh, conversational or conversation. It shouldn't feel like you're interviewing or you're going down a list. Uh, and that's why actually memorizing the script allows you to have freedom from the actual script and freedom from thinking about, okay, what's my next step, what's my next step? So I actually still to this day have cue cards that I read off before I get started because I want to constantly work on this skill of uh, memorizing the skip, uh, script so I can be a better service to my leads, my sellers. And anytime that you're going through this and you are in doubt, you can always fall back on CPR time. And those are the four essential, very important aspects uh, that you need to pull from um, the conversation. The most important thing, of course, is again being likable and connecting um, with your the lead. But if you're talking and you get lost, you can always fall back on the condition of the property, the price that they're looking for, the reason, the motivation behind um, selling, and the timeline for selling. Um, but then, of course, this is a skill that everyone can learn. Some people may assume that they're natural sales um, people. However, this is something that uh, whether you're a natural at it or whether you're an introvert or whether you're an extrovert, you can learn and it still takes practice. So let's take a look at it. So part one, the intro and build a report. Something as simple like this, the first 30 seconds will give you the next 30 seconds. And we want to use first names here because we want to, again, uh, exude uh, a sense of friendliness. So, hello, I'm looking for John. This is Courtney. I know this calls out of the blue, but 
calling about a property I believe you own at 647 John Street. Yeah, we're buying properties in that area, and I just wanted to see if you would consider an offer on that property there. See, I'm ending with a question. I've already started to establish who I am, why I'm calling, and I'm a little disrupting it because I'm, I'm saying, you know, this calls out of blue, but uh, I'm calling about a property I believe you own. Um, so those are extremely um, uh, very important uh, tips. One thing also, when you're calling for the name, try not to end with an uptick. I'm looking for John, or I'm looking for John. Uh, it was the downtick. That signals the brain a little different than the uptick where it sounds more like it sells you or you're not sure who you're calling. Again, we want to exude confidence. So a few more notes about this is that, again, the first 20 seconds give you the next 20 seconds. When you're smiling, you're talking, uh, that shows up. Mirror the seller's tone. If the seller seems upbeat when you're talking to them, be upbeat. If they seem low key, you're still going to be friendly and try to have a friendly vibe, but you want to uh, sound a little more, more low key. And if you can't pronounce the seller's name, don't attempt that the seller has a name that's challenging for you to pronounce. Just say, hey, I'm looking for the owner of 2476 Street. Okay? All right. Let's move on to part two. Part two, set expectations. Again, you're here, you only have a few moments, so you wanna go ahead and set the expectations so that the sellers know that, oh, you understand what you're doing, you are uh, someone who is certain and they know what they're, they're gonna get out of this, all right? So, all right, if you get to this bar and they say yes, they want to, they're interested in selling, um, great. Well, just to let you know, we base our offers off the condition of the property, the market value, and of course, the seller situation. So John, we can't buy every property, so I'll just ask a few questions to see if we're a right fit. This usually takes about five, seven minutes to see if we're the buyers for you. Either way, if we're not, we will sit with you and figure out what the best options are, whether that's us or not. How does that sound? Is that okay? Again, ending with a question. Ending with a question allows you to remain in control of the conversation. Great. So tell me a little about your property, and then just be quiet. Let them talk. Sometimes I have variations. I may say, especially if I'm, if I'm following up, so catch me up, and I let them talk. Again, you want to be talking 20% of the time and allow them to talk 80% of the time. People like the sound of their own voice. So again, when you build a rapport, it's not about the property. It's about listening. It's about affirming. And when they're talking, you're giving verbal, nonverbal. You're, mm-hmm, uh-huh, yep. You're even shaking your head with the nonverbal, but you're, yep, sure, great. Again, we're here to serve. You're going to see a theme uh, as, you, uh, as, as we walk through this. Um, set the expectation, build that credibility, as we said. And again, you are trying to find all the pieces of the puzzle. This is something that I even say sometimes. I just need to find what the situation is to find out if we are the actual uh, uh, solution for you, all right? And so you're just listening and you're documenting everything they're saying. I usually just write it down so it doesn't sound like <laughs> click, 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 like I'm typing. But you're documenting everything they're saying because all their information about their grandma's dog or uh, their sore foot or food that they like, anything, all of that's going to allow you, allow you to allow you to build you to build that you're following up. And many of these uh, leads or sales are going to come in the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh follow up. So when I know more and more about this person, uh, the more they're going to feel inclined to sell to me, even if it's at a very discounted price. And we're qualifying the leads. It is, you're going to hear tons more no's than yeses, and that's great. The quicker we get to a no, awesome. The sooner we get to the next yes. So qualifying the leads by knowing if the condition of the property is, uh, um, or if there's an issue that we can resolve, uh, what their price line is and what their timeline is, um, is extremely important. Third, this part three may sound odd, but seeking pain. It is extremely important. If the seller does not have a problem for us to solve, we can't, we can't add value. So, some questions like, why do you want to sell your house? So, what's your time frame? When do you want to sell it? You know, and you're just listening. Okay. Oh, well, why haven't you sold it with the realtor? Sounds like you're looking for market values, you know? So, since we can buy your property as is, what kind of repairs does it need? And you're just listening. And this is something that's a little more organic and based on the conversation. But you're listening. You're seeking the pain. You want to find out what the pain points are. And most buyers are going to be, a little reluctant because sometimes they don't know, oh, well, sellers are to say, they're not quite sure what their pain points are yet until you have highlighted, or they're a little reluctant because, you know, sometimes they're a little ashamed or embarrassed or, or whatever it is. But your job as a servant is to help seek the pain. I know that sounds odd, but you're, all, you're like, you're like a, a doctor or a physician with great bedside service. If we can't 
serve or help that, uh, that uh, client by helping them see what their pain points are, um, then we're not gonna be as effective. So we wanna continue to seek the pain and then we wanna drill into the pain points. And we drill into the pain points in part four by the impact of the pain. So how is that affecting you? Oh, wow, you don't have a, uh, uh, your tenant's not uh, paying. Yeah, is, is that a challenge for you? Okay, yeah, all right, wow. Uh, but, so why haven't you fixed it up yourself? Oh, uh, yeah, having contractors is, 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 is challenging. Do you, do, you, do, you, do you want us to help you find some contractors? We know some great ones in the area. Or is there a mortgage that, that they have to be paid off? And a few notes about all of this is that you're saying this matter-of-factly, um, particularly when we're talking about the mortgage. Some people may be very hesitant, but quite often if you just ask without any hesitation, without any, oh, we're just asking because, you know, uh, I don't know, hey, I, just, uh, I need to know what the mortgage is. If they ask you why, well, it helps us determine what the uh, price will be. We need to know if there's uh, any mortgages or liens or anything that we need to pay off. So how much is the mortgage? And you go back again. Whoever is asking the questions is controlling the conversation. Whoever's talking less is actually controlling the conversation. Uh, you want to remain in control. Um, and again, finding the impact is not just enough to find the pain, but find the impact. How is this pain impacting your life? Oh, wow, so you're not able to go on that vacation or uh, you're looking to, uh, to move and you're having a hard time. Yeah, I can understand that. You're, you're showing empathy and you're highlighting that, that pain. And you're also pulling away. You're finding other solutions for them. One, it shows that you're not you know, needy or begging for, for their sale or for their deal. Um, but it's also a technique that's very important in sales because no one likes to be sold to. People like to buy as opposed to sell. And I know it's kind of odd because we're actually selling our ability to buy their property. So it's kind of reversed. <laughs> Sorry, I got my, all these uh, uh, notifications coming up. It's time to get to work. But, um, but yeah, but, but, but being able to um, uh, show that, that hey, we're, we're, you're going to have to convince me to sell your property and show that, hey, we're not just trying to sit here and just uh, buy a property for you. We're trying to figure out what the best solution is for you because we are person-centric. We are trying to build trusting, dependable relationships. So the pull-away technique is a, a, um, very important, especially when you're showing the impact of the pain. And then part five, you're responding to the pain with the value we add. So this is where you, you know, particularly show that reflective and uh, um, uh, active listening. So it sounds like uh, being a landlord has, has been a challenge because of the tenant here. So it's okay if I tell you how we work, again, asking questions and, um, to see if we're even a, able to be a good fit or if we're able to take a look at your property or more or talk anymore. Again, then you know who you are. We're the aqua team, we're a group of sellers local to Florida, or local to the Baltimore area or wherever space that we're calling. And we usually buy property for two reasons. We either buy, fix them up a little bit, add them to our rental portfolio. Or the second reason is that we buy properties that need work and do a complete renovation. I mean, like new roof, granite countertops, updated bathroom and kitchens. We try to make it one of the better houses in the neighborhood. And then we put it back on the market, usually within six months. Now, with that being said, John, we're not realtor buyers, retail buyers. We can offer time to convenience for a discounted cost. So we can close quickly, pay cash. We don't have to do any repairs or any closing costs. Or, and this is where, I'm adding this list here, but this is where you're specifically talking to the pain. If they're not worried about the repairs or things of nature, you wouldn't necessarily have to speak to that, but you speak to exactly what they're paying. So this is a little more organic. But we're not able to buy every property we look at. So based on what, that, what we do, does it make sense for us to talk anymore or uh, what price are you hoping to get? And when you ask for that, you hush and you be quiet and it's going to probably sound very awkward if they don't speak automatically, um, but you just wait, 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 wait. First person talk is should be the leader of the seller and they usually respond with uh, what they're looking for the price they're looking for um, or, or the solution that they're hoping to find but remember your whole goal is to establish rapport if you can get a price out of them that is extremely important and the motivation is extremely important um, however you can always fall back on hey well I'm not the one to run I just gather information to see if we can help my team runs the numbers so that you don't feel the pressure of having to put the price out there because that's what they want. Once you offer them the price, you really have no value to give them anymore. So you want to hold that back as much as possible and get the price from them as much as possible. Um, there are techniques that you can use if they are really, really hammering it in after you try four or five times to get the price out of them in different ways, uh, such as giving a range or saying, what if, you know, what if we could be in the, and you want a low ball? 
we'll discuss that further um, down in the training. But what if we're twenty thousand to thirty-five thousand? You know, and because if you say what if, you can always say, well, I'm not saying we're there. I just don't have to check my team. There's one that wants to see. All right, you know, and you can. This is where you also uh, can continue to uh, pull away. Gives them the sense of power and control. And now the next part is really challenging for some of us is, is asking for uh, and finding and addressing those deal breakers. And I'll continue to ask you this, there's so many deal breakers, but you want to find out, are, is there anyone else I need to talk to about this property? Is that if we agreed on the price and all the terms, is there anything stopping us from moving forward? Uh, uh, have you spoken to other, do you have other offers out uh, at this time? Because you want to make sure that, that before you present your offer, that you, that you have addressed all these deals. Because if you don't address them, then regardless of how much rapport you've established, regardless of how much value you add, uh, the deal quite often can, will not get done. And we're not here just to sell, we're here to close and help the sellers out and make a profit for ourselves. Um, you know, and sometimes we go, okay, we agreed on the terms, we agreed on everything, so what's next? And they'll say, well, I guess it's, let's put something in writing or something, you know? And so uh, again, it's important to find out, and I've, I spoke to most of these, so I won't I'll repeat myself, but uh, you need to find out all the big issues that you can help resolve. Because you might find out that you're not able to resolve the issues, and that's, that's perfectly okay as well. We're, again, not forcing this down anyone's uh, throat. And then closing the deal. Uh, so our next step, I guess, is to sign up, send over the purchase agreement. Um, and once it's signed, you let them know what's happening, what's the steps, technique, what's happening next. Once this is signed, our title company will contact you within 24 hours to set up the, the, the closing. Now, our purchase agreement is pretty straightforward, but we definitely want to make sure we review it together, especially for some big decision like this, and make sure we can answer any questions you have. So is there a good email that I can uh, send the document to? Um, you know, just, you're just being a matter of fact that it's going to be an e-sign. Great, thanks. Now, you may have some folks who want to be in person, and of course, we'll act accordingly and plan accordingly. But you let them know. If you don't look out for the document, let me know when you receive it. You sit right there on the phone with them as you do that and you go through the process of sending them the document if you're at this stage. And this is usually maybe the second, third, or fourth conversation. There may be some home runs that you hit that you lock it up in, at the very beginning, but um, uh, quite often this is after uh, several conversations. And we can review it together, or I can call you back in 10 minutes after you've had a chance to review. And you know, you're just going through the, the highlight the points of the, of the document. Uh, which is pretty standard for everyone. And then you make sure that they sign that bad boy and then we move it on to title, make sure that the title company gets it immediately so that they can start the process and contact the seller so that they know, that, oh, what we say we're gonna do, we do and we're adding value. So anyone can sell, anyone can sell, we gotta fix a little bit of typos, but, uh, um, but anyway, I'm thinking anyone can sell, but closures are the ones that get paid we only get paid if we can add value and we can address all the needs of ourselves. So there's a script in the nutshell. Again, it will be tweaked up and down. There's tons of resources to go to afterwards. Highly recommend John Martinez's. He has tons of free content out there on how um, seller psychology and closing the deals. And we'll work on this together. Another thing is role play, role play, role play. I role play um, either with myself once a day, um, but I particularly get into groups uh, on Fridays with some really awesome, amazing folks that I'm so nervous around, but uh, helps me uh, become stronger. Uh, you know, iron sharpens iron, steel sharpens steel, whatever the term is. But regardless, I want you to take a look at this and we'll continue to work together on different parts of it. Um, and if we're not working together and you're just looking at this, uh, please hope it uh, helps you in your world. would love any feedback that you have about that. And um, if you're looking at this on the YouTube page or or any other uh, devices, please like, subscribe, share, share your comment, share your thoughts. We're trying to grow. And as always, rise and tides lifts all sales. You all take care. All right.